So, uh, hello YouTube. This is my first video, and it's, I'm doing it on uh, the comparative anatomy of the uh, North American porcupine, uh, Arizzo dorsatum, and the uh, common uh, eastern gray squirrel, known as a uh, Scarius carolinen carolinensis. Um, these two rodents are uh, very similar because they're both in the um, they're both uh, very common um, animals. They're very commonly seen um, in a different uh, boreal forests around North America. Um, so uh, the first, uh, but uh, they're they're, they're char rodents are characterized. Sorry, rodents are characterized into four uh, groups based on their jaw structures. Um, this is, the jaw structure is known as the uh, zygomastic system. Um, the zygomastic system is made up of the uh, masseter muscles, so those are like the uh, the muscle, like the cheek muscles, right? They uh, those are the muscles that uh, facilitate chewing. So it's made up of the masseter muscles and the zygomatic arch, which is the uh, cheekbone. Um, this is uh, this enables gnawing in rodents, which is an important uh, feature that uh, that uh, defines what a rodent is: is its ability to gnaw. Um, so gnawing is enabled the front and back motion by the three uh, divisions of, by the masseter, by the masseter bone being div divided into three parts. Um, like I said, the four mor morphs of these are the, uh, scuromorpha, where, uh, the zygomatic plate, where the, where, sorry, the, where the zygoma, the cheekbone, um, for fuses into the zygomatic plate, and, um, the latter, and the lateral masseter, um, extends towards the, uh, rostrum, towards the snout of, uh, the animal. Um, there's also the uh, hystricomorpha, where um, the uh, masseter is enlarged and extends over most of the jaw of the jaw length. So it um, extends over most of the uh, molars, um, whereas in the uh, scuromorpha, it leaves most of the molar most of the molars um, um, exposed. Um, there's the protrogomorpha, which is the most primitive um, the most pr primitive morph, and most of the ones in, most of the species that fall into that category are just fossil records. Except for Alpondita rufa, which is the uh, mountain beaver, um, which you find up in like northern northern Canada, the mountain beaver, um, where the uh, the rostrum is unmodified, so the snout is unmodified, like uh, like how it is in most rodents, where it's been modified for gnawing, very primitive. Then there's the myomorpha, which is the uh, I guess you can say the most the most evolutionarily advanced uh, rodent group, and this includes like rats and mice. Um, this is this is it's kind of like a mixture of um, scuromorpha and hystricomorpha, where uh, where the zygomatic is tilted and into the plate, and the optical foramen is enlarged, which is the uh, optical the optical opening it is enlarged to allow for larger eyes, um, which is a very advantageous uh, adaptation if you're a rodent, right? Um, so first I have a I have a couple of uh, little Examples here. Um, the first is uh, it's a po the porcupine uh, jawbone, right there. There's the lower uh, side of it. Then turn around, you can see inside of it. Now, this porcupine was um, relatively young. He wasn't too old. I found him on a. I was on a enduro on some road enduro. I didn't mark down the road because that's what an awesome biologist I am. I don't <laughs> I didn't record my sight. But uh, no, this is a. It gives us a wealth of information. I've got uh, both both pieces of the jaws here, so they fit together nicely like that, and they uh, give you give you a good idea of just how big this guy was. And I've got um a section of his uh upper upper jaw, the upper mandible, um right here. So fits together nicely, but um it's good because you get a good view of the, of the teeth. Um, the front teeth are the, right there, the little orange guys, those are the incisors. And if we look here, you can see that right there, that, that's the root of uh, the incisor. So uh, rodents, all rodents have this in common, their uh, teeth are, have really deep roots that go into their jaw and grow continuously um, throughout their life. So uh, that's a good little feature there. Also if we look on um, here, that's the, uh, that's the plate. And then here it's teeth. Uh, those, the last it has four, eight molars, four on each side. The first, the uh, last three on each side are the molars, and then the first one is known as the premolar. Now, um, 
look at this, there's this little space here, and that's called the uh, diastem. The diastem is the uh, the gap in between the um, incisors and the premolars, and uh, it's filled with um, the with the animal's cheeks and the tongue, and this gives like a little um, a little gap, a little gap for food after it's been chewed to go in there, and it's controlled by a sphincter muscle. Um, the porcupine eats uh, mainly tree bark and stuff like tree bark, conifer needles um, in the winter and in the summer. It'll eat more uh, vegetation, more um, saplings, more twigs and stuff like that. So it, it's it's food um, is typically very uh, very tough, very hard to chew, and so it requires these. Uh, just show this again. It requires these very um, strong teeth for uh, chewing. Um, they also uh, have very strong claws too. I wish I had some claws with me, but um, because they uh, they live in uh, hollowed out areas in trees or up high in trees. Um, they're they're very arboreal rodents, so uh, they rely a lot heavily on their teeth and on their claws for um, for living in their habitat, which is fairly woody. Um, all right, and uh, yes, here this is a uh, just what I meant also. Um, the sorry, the porcupine. Um, when I mentioned those uh, four categories earlier, the porcupine is a hystricomorph, and we'll sh I'll show you evidence of that. Is um, you see the masseter? This ma this right here is the masseter. The masseter bone. Um, it's in three parts. There's one, two, and three. Those those parts are kind of diminutive. Um, up there, but uh, get the point. Um, now it extends over most of the jaw length. If we look in here, uh, you can see there. The little bones, they cover almost two of its back molars, so it's extending pretty far over most of its jaw length. Um, we compare this with my second specimen, the uh, common European squirrel, uh, the, I'm sorry, the common gray squirrel, um, Gerius carolinensis. Um, we see that they have very similar jaws here. I just outlined it. I outlined an area on this jawbone here. This is the, uh, the internal side that I'm showing you. I just outlined it. That's his a uh, tooth at the top, and that's the root. Just to show you guys that all rodents have that um, tooth root in common, as well as a. Uh, you can see the. Uh, get it there. <laughs> you can see this area right there is the diastem. Um. So uh, they're very similar, except squirrels are not. Um, squirrels are uh, they're scaromorphic. So that means the uh, have a actually have a skull here. Oh, I will show you the uh, squirrel differs in that. Now I wish I had a I wish I had the top part of the porcupine skull so I could compare it to the gematic, But if we look at this this little guy, this little European, this little uh, in European, this little gray squirrel. Um, we have the zygomatic arch right there, and then it goes into goes and just kind of folds, just ge just gently tilts and folds into the uh, the plate. Zygomatic plate right there, so um, give it a nice basis. So that's just a defining characteristic, um, as well as the uh, if I can get its jaw up here. Now, its jaw bones at the back are very different from the porcupine. Now, we'll get it up close like this. Um, you see, there's those three, one, two, three, and then in the porcupine, it is a uh, sorry, it's a uh, It's a uh, well, well larger, but um, you see those three bones are in different areas, so they're they've been um, adapted for different uses. Uh, the squirrel, the squirrels are they're very opportunistic feeders. They feed mostly on nuts and stuff that requires um, sharp, very durable teeth to chew through. But nothing like a porcupine that has to chew through like um, tree bark and all that to get its food. So it really relies um, less on having that power in its jaw and it. Focuses more on stability because it's trying to crush because they're trying to crush nuts. So evolution has selected the species um the species jaw shapes for stability for chewing um smaller objects rather than um but rather than the power that is uh, associated with the porcupine skull. Um, squirrels uh, are also arboreal, which everybody knows. I mean, you can see them all over the place, always climbing trees. They're arboreal and they live in nests known as drays. Which um, they build typically in the forks of trees, very high up, out of uh, leaves and stuff like that. Um, 
that this is where their diet stem really comes in handy. Here's a, another view of it. You can see it is the is the premolars and the molars. Yeah, premolars, molars, and then the area in between is the diastem, and uh, which is filled with the, of course, again the cheeks and the tongue. And this actually can can be used as a pocket by squirrels and by, um, of course, more familiarly, uh, chipmunks, which are also spheromorphic, um, which they use that to uh, stick their nesting materials in, as well as uh, nuts and food as food as well. So it uh, increases their fitness in the wild. They can uh, harvest more. Harvest more, um, in the, more, sorry, harvest uh, more in the mouth than other animals, so that could increase their survival over maybe a species that doesn't, that isn't able to harvest harvest as efficiently. So I'm trying to get at. Um, and yes. Uh, so basically, it for now. Um, here I'll end with my I'll show my specimen again. Yeah, stick the jawbone together. There you go. Well, thank you for watching. Hopefully it was um, somewhat informative. <laughs> right.